video is going to answer the essential question, how do genes really determine our traits? So before we begin, I want you to take a look at this image. And based on this image, what do you think is the connection between DNA, proteins, and traits? So why don't you jot down your ideas, pause, unpause when you're ready to continue. So if we look at this image here, we see our DNA and we see uh, three different genes. And we uh, see that each gene appears to produce a particular protein. And these proteins are different in their shape. And then they're also different in the job they, they perform. So we look at protein A, we see that it actually is responsible for making the A antigen uh, that we see on our red blood cells. And then we see the B protein uh, produces the pigment, the brown pigment in our skin. And then C, protein C, is going to carry oxygen in our red blood cells. So, so far you've probably deduced that a particular gene codes for a particular protein and proteins do different jobs. But now what's the connection to traits? Well, we look at protein A, we see that it makes the A antigen on our red blood cells. So you think about it, if you have a functional copy of this gene, a functional allele, then you're going to be A blood type. And if you don't, then you're going to be O blood type. Now, of course, we also know that there's a, a, another allele for B blood type. And then we look at the B protein, it's going to produce the brown melanin in our skin. Uh, and if so, if you have a certain amount of this melanin, the darker your skin color is going to be. But if you're a mutant and you have uh, no functioning B protein, then you're al albino. And then we see for protein C that if you have functional copies of this gene and this protein, then you have normal blood oxygen levels. And then if not, you have low oxygen blood levels like in an anemic patients. So if we put the pieces together, it, appear, it appears that the protein does a particular job and depending on whether it does its job or how well it does its job that is going to result in a particular phenotype or a particular trait. DNA sort of indirectly uh, codes for our traits because it directly codes for proteins and proteins do their jobs which produce our traits. So now let's add in the information about the sequence of DNA. So let's just zoom in on gene 1 for, us, for example. And we see that we have a wild type sequence and a mutant sequence. And we see these two different uh, base sequences here. And my question to you is looking at the rest of this image, how do you think mutations affect our phenotypes? So jot down your ideas, pause, unpause when you're ready to uh, continue. And you probably deduce that the base sequence of DNA, of course, is going to produce a different protein. So we see that the wild type sequence is different than the mutant sequence. We see that the protein is different. And in this case, the wild type protein is responsible for making the A antigen on red blood cells. So we have a phenotype of A blood type. But a different sequence might make a similar protein, but a non-functional protein. And if that's the case, then you won't have the antigens on your red blood cells. And if you don't, then we, of course, we know that you're O blood type. So mutations affect our phenotypes because the difference in base sequence makes a different protein, which may or may not do its job or do its job differently, which is going to lead to a different phenotype. So we're going to explore a little bit more about this DNA protein trait connection. And I want you to look at this slide here. I want you to read it. I want you to answer the questions, jot them down. Uh, and then when you're ready to uh, talk about it, then continue. So a lot of different answers that I've heard about why do you think the library holds some books for reference um, is that perhaps these books are rare, perhaps they have important information, perhaps they're too large, they're valuable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you can't borrow the book, then how do you get this information home? Well, I've heard many answers like make a photocopy, take down notes, take a picture, scan it, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So then bringing this to the cell, all the parts of the cell are controlled by the information in DNA, yet it does not leave the nucleus. So how does this information uh, leave the nucleus if the DNA doesn't? And you probably figured out that it's similar to the reference section and that we can take notes or copy of our DNA 
and send that send that copy or those notes out of the nucleus while retaining this important DNA so that it doesn't get damaged, it stays inside the nucleus. This brings us to the central dogma uh, of genetics uh, and biology. And it basically, the cent central dogma tells us that uh, we have DNA which has information. That information is going to be um, what we call transcribed into another message, which we call mRNA or messenger RNA. And the messenger RNA is going to leave the nucleus and it has the information that was stored in the DNA and that's going to lead to the production of proteins. And as we learned earlier, proteins do certain jobs which will determine our traits. So we go from our genes and DNA to our message and messenger RNA to our protein which does a job and gives us our traits. So what we're going to do uh, in future videos is we're going to learn about the process of how mRNA is made uh, from DNA and then how protein is made from the instructions in the mRNA. Thank you.